Hi guys, I just wanted to introduce you to this project that I've been working on. Uh, Ta-da! I am working on refinishing our piano and I wanted to take just a moment before I show you that actual process and kind of introduce you to this because this is a pretty common piano to find in the household. I'll tell you why that is here in just a minute. Uh, my thought was that when I went to refinish this piano, I wanted to do something that would really last. Um, painted pianos are, are great. I've seen a lot of really cool versions of them. Uh, my thought, though, was that if I painted it, I might, in a year or two, wish I'd done something different. So I decided to go the longer route and stay in the piano, which is why you see it uh, somewhat disassembled here. The parts are off here to the side. Um, so that, that's my reason there, nothing against those who do paint pianos, I just, I felt like this was a longer term decision. Um, this may not look as familiar because it's taken apart, but this is, uh, this is a spinet piano made by Wurlitzer. A little bit of background, uh, indulge me here, my background is, is a history teacher, so I tend to learn about the pieces I'm working on and it helps inform what I decide to do with them. So, um, Wurlitzer pianos, uh, Wurlitzer is a German immigrant, I don't recall his first name, Richard or something, uh, first started his company with stringed instruments in the mid-1800s, started producing pianos in the 1880s. His big contribution was that in the mid-1930s he started producing this version of the spinet piano, which this is a version, and it's a less expensive piano than the typical upright or baby grand pianos that you would find. So people started buying them. That's why you see so many today. And he produced them from the mid-1930s all the way up through when the company was sold to the Baldwin Piano Company in 1988. So there are a lot of them out there. And um, <clears throat> just a little further background, <laughs> if you want to know, uh, Baldwin was actually bought out by Gibson uh, as a guitar company in, I think, 1996. Um, and Gibson ended up purchasing all of the other Wurlitzer holdings. They ended up making jukeboxes and electric pianos and organs and that sort of thing. Um, anyway, they stopped making these pianos recently, just in 2009, so there are no more of these actually being produced. But the market was pretty well flooded with them. So if you have one of these in your home and you're wondering, what is it worth? Don't quote me on this, but I believe you're only looking at around $300. They're not a very expensive piano, and there's good and there's bad to that. Everybody would love to have that expensive piano in their home, but if it was, I certainly wouldn't be doing this to it. So, um, if you want to find out the year of your piano, what you do is, you, if you open up the top, probably the top here, you're going to find the, um, you'll find the wireless engraving, which is actually kind of cool, it's kind of artistic, and then there's a, a serial number engraved in the actual soundboard here, and if you look up that number online, it'll tell you when it was made. Uh, so this one is actually a 1964 version. This was originally purchased by my husband's grandparents, uh, so it's been in the family for a while. And I want to honor that. I didn't want to paint it like, like I said, so I've taken it apart and I've worked really hard to strip it down, sand it, just prep it for staining. Uh, this is a maple veneer, so I didn't want to stain, or I mean, excuse me, sand too much and go through this layer. Um, but I'm excited for this process. I want to share it with you so you can see how this is done. Um, let me just cut this. I will be using uh, Weatherwood stands. I first heard about Weatherwood about three months ago. Uh, they make a reactive stain. Um, I'll share a little more in the next video about what that means, but um, I've been very excited to use this product and, and uh, Really excited to see how this turns out here on this piano. So stick around. You will tune in to the next video. I am going to show you a time lapse of how this reclamation stain works. Thanks. 